This is an ampersand. An ampersand is a logograph. For those of you who don't know what is a logograph, a logograph is a symbol that represents a word. For example, this here is the logograph for the word at. Now, an ampersand happens to be the logograph for the Latin word at, which in English means end. For example, if I wanted to say me and you in Latin, I would say me at te. Now, it is here where our story of symbols that will lead us to exponents begins. Now, the symbol that we just spoke about, which is an ampersand, looks like this, right? And legends have it that the mathematical symbol for plus was derived from this logograph. For example, if you think about it, when I wanted to say 2 and 3, I will just write 2 and 3 by combining those two letters, which happen to be this logograph. Now, this is how it then led us to the mathematical symbol addition, which we now know as 2 plus 3, which we know the result of to be equal to 5. Now, I don't know where exactly this came from, but legends have it that either the plus sign was derived from this part of this logograph. Or maybe if you think about it, right, and you look at it like that, it looks somehow like a plus to some extent, right? Now, the plus sign happens to be the Chuck Norris of all the mathematical symbols. Why am I saying that? Well, because the subtraction sign the multiplication sign and the division sign can all be derived in terms of the addition. They can all be defined or explained in terms of addition. For example, if 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, then the reverse process of addition is what we call subtraction. So if you ask me, I can make an argument and say this sign exists because of that one. It exists to reverse the process of addition. For example, if I say 5 minus 3, the answer is going to be 2. So by definition, we can define subtraction as the reverse process of addition. Now, the other exciting symbol is this one of multiplication. And where does this one come from? Well, if you think about it, instead of writing 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, plus two mathematicians are very lazy people. We pride ourselves with laziness. So we came up with an idea of cutting that shot and representing it with only three symbols. So we know that 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 gives you 10. Now this process of repeated addition became multiplication because we then said, instead of writing all that, let's call it 2 and introduce a new symbol to represent a, a repeated addition. And then we say, you are repeating the addition of 2 how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five times, and you guys know two times five happens to be equal to ten. All right. Now, the last one is division. What is division? Well, division is the reverse process of multiplication, but we can also define division as repeated subtraction. If multiplication is repeated addition, then division will be repeated subtraction. Let's demonstrate that. Imagine if somebody was saying to you twelve divided by 2. So in essence, this is asking you, how many times can we subtract 2 out of 12? And then you'll agree with me, we can do it the first time. When you do 12 minus 2, you're going to get an answer of 10. On that 10, if you minus 2 again, you're going to get 8. If you minus 2, you're going to get 6. If you minus 2, you're going to get 4. Minus 2 will give you 2. Minus 2, you'll end up with nothing. So let's look at how many times we succeeded to subtract 2 out of 12. And if we check, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times that we managed. So 12 divided by 2 gives us an answer of 6. So that also shows you if division is repeated subtraction, and subtraction is a reverse process of addition, it means we can define division in terms of addition. Now, how does this actually help us when we come to exponents? Let's think about this in the context of exponents. So we know for a fact that multiplication is repeated addition. But what is repeated multiplication? What is repeated multiplication? For example, if I write here, I can say we know that 2 plus 2 plus 2, right, is just 
as good as two added to itself three times, which is going to give us an answer of six. But what is two times? Two times two going to be now. Like I said, we are mathematicians. We pride ourselves with laziness. So instead of writing two times two times two times two, many, many times, I can even put two more multiplications there. One, two, three, four, five. When you're multiplying two by itself five times, we then came up with a new method of representing that. And we called this two. And we put a small number on top there that tells you how many times is this two multiplied to itself. And this is what we call an exponential term. Right, an exponential term. 10, which is where our knowledge of exponents begins. Now, if you ask me, I can actually make a claim that even exponents can be redefined in terms of addition. Because if you think about it, um, the multiplication is a repeated addition. Exponential terms are repeated multiplication. So in essence, you can claim that exponents is repeated addition of repeated addition. Keep that in mind. Right, very powerful. Now, when you're looking at an exponential term, like this one that you're currently uh, looking at, which is 2 to the power of 5, there are three things that I want to draw your attention to. For example, this number here has got a special uh, label. Even this one on top here also has a special label. This is what we call the base of the exponential term. And the number on top is what we call the exponent in this particular term. Now, an exponent has a synonym, and the synonym of exponent is what we call an index, right? An index. In plural terms, exponent, exponents. Index, indices. Please keep that in mind. Very important. Now, many people make a mistake of confusing an exponent with a power. So what is a power in this context? Well, the whole result that you get, when you take 2 and you raise it to an exponent of 5, you get what we call a power. Right? 5 is not a power, but 2 to the exponent 5 is a power. The result you get from this is actually the power. So when you're saying 2 to the power of 5, it doesn't mean that 5 is the power. It just means that 2 together with the 5 collectively make up the power. So very important for us to keep that in mind. Now from here, we're going to look at a couple of laws of exponents that will demonstrate how do you handle exponential terms when you have to multiply different bases or the same bases, when you have to divide them, when you're raising a power to a power, and those kinds of things. We're going to look now at a couple of examples that demonstrate a couple of laws on exponents and how to use them to solve mathematical problems.